morning, everybody. We're so glad to have you all here today. I'm Chloe Green. I'm coming to you from the Maryland Center for History and Culture. And we are so excited to welcome everybody here today for our Object Dive program for material activism. And I am so excited to be joined by Dion Moses, who is an absolutely incredible artist and curator and activist, and also a neighbor of the museum, literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, so welcome, Dion. I see a couple familiar faces in the room with us today. So great to see you all again, too. Um, and thank you to Margo, who is on our back end for this program. So I wanted to go ahead and get started. I would love to introduce Dion Moses. So Dion, I have your artist bio. Would you like me to read it or would you like to just tell people yourself about your career and what it is you do? Um, you go first. <laughs> I like to go first. Good All morning, right. everybody. Nice to see everybody. Awesome. So everybody, Dion Moses. She is an artist, activist, and curator. In 2019, she graduated from the Maryland Institute College of Art with a BFA in photography. Her undergraduate thesis, the Maryland Institute Black Archives, also known as MIBA, uncovers Micah's Black history. The archives exhibition Black Lives and Remembrance Take Back the Steps prompted Micah's president, Samuel Hoy, to issue a letter in February 2019 apologizing for the institution's racist past. Dion, I have to take, take a second to say that is very powerful, so thank you for doing that. <laughs> Uh, the project has created a collective awareness around institutional racism on the campus, Baltimore, and broader art world. Miss Moses archives the communities around her in an effort to shape visual consciousness. She, inten she intends to continue MIBA in the curatorial practice program in order to become Micah's Black History historian. And I think you are on a very good track to do that. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Chloe. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Clinton. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. So we're gonna go ahead, before we jump into what the program is about today, we're just going to go over just a few virtual etiquette guidelines, just to make sure we all have a good time and because Zoom can be a funny thing. So, <laughs> so we do have the raise hand feature on your screen. So if you have a question or you would like to offer some input or you have a thought, this is a pretty open dialogue between Dion and I and all of you today. So if anybody wants to add something, please feel free to use that raise your hand feature and we will glad call on you. Marco is also helping us out, keeping track of who would like to speak. So you can make sure to do that. You may, you may have your camera on and interact. Don't worry about having it on if you don't feel like it. And also, uh, let's try. We're going to have several voices going on today, and then we'll have a craft activity later. So we'll try to keep our videos muted if possible, unless you are speaking or we ask a question and would like you to respond. So thank you all so much for bearing with me for that quick rules. <laughs> so now for the program today, we're going to show a couple examples of some historic images. We're gonna look at one by Paul Henderson and Richard Childress. And we're going to talk about what is in this historical image, what is happening, why it's important, why this image was taken. And then we're going to look at examples of Dion's work because Dion's work is has a lot in common with Mr. Henderson and Mr. Childress's photos as tools of capturing history in the moment as it's happening. So we're going to look at Dion's work and discuss Black Eyes and Dion's current work. Dion also works with the Afro News right now. And so we're going to look at Dion's art practice and why she does what she does. And then after a quick break, we're going to have our camera making activity. So Dion, do you have anything you wanna add? No, I'm excited. Let's get started. All right, I'm excited too. Let's jump into this. So as we're going to look at some of these photos today also, we have some choice vocabulary words that we want to talk about. One big one that Dion and I keep talking about is activist versus advocate. And I know we're, we're itching 
interesting to talk about that because we think that's super interesting. Yes. Uh, but we're also, we're going to discuss a little bit what civil rights means, what an activist himself is. And we're also going to think about, um, Dion, do you have any other words actually? Activist art. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm really excited. Um, you want to go over the first vocabulary word? Let's do it. So our first vocab word, we're going to talk about civil rights. We're going to yes. start with the basic. We'll have our images pop up here in a second. But Dion, you want to kick us off. What is civil rights? Civil rights, it's a phrase that we like to use, but it's guarantee. It talks about the guarantees of equal rights for all. Um, in society, equal protection of the law, regardless of your race, regardless of your religion, regardless of your sex, regardless of your personal beliefs, any characteristics at all. Um, and that hasn't always been um, the case in the United States or in the world, actually. Um, there's always people who are disenfranchised by people who are, um, who see themselves as better than others. Um, so unfortunately, it's been going on for, you know, a while. And um, people are always in different groups, um, always um, fighting back and um and lifting up their voices and they do that you know in a variety of different ways mm -hmm. um so we'll talk about a lot of those different ways that you can do that as well today oh my god because there's so many ways now especially with social right. media so yes. many ways to be active mm -hmm. be connected yeah and it makes me think about when we were talking about the word activist and the word advocate yeah. um and so um you want to talk about like i can talk about what activist is and then we can talk about like the difference you know in advocate we have those Absolutely. conversations yeah. and so like when we're talking about being an activist it's like you know the person who as we say speaks yes. and um wants to um talk about a social issue or an issue that they may be or some gap that they may see or um, some type of injustice and um, they want to change um what's happening so they try to get people together but mm -hmm. an advocate is it's also similar an advocate mm -hmm. may not be so out front out in the front speaking but an advocate is someone who is um, getting others together and also yeah. listening. I think an activist yeah. also listens because you can't just always talk. You got to listen um, to the people and you got to listen to your community and um, others around you are also affected by the issue or those who may see a different point from you, you know? So mm -hmm. um, I think activist and advocate is two different words, but they do work hand in hand. Um, mm -hmm. And you don't always have to be an, um, an activist. You can be an advocate and be just as successful in, mm -hmm. you know, the different causes and your beliefs and things that you might want to change in the world. Yeah. Beautifully said, beautifully said. <laughs> and it sounds like you speak a lot from experience. And I know it seems with a lot of work, your work too, you've been in both of those positions. You've been yeah. an advocate, but you've also been an activist. Yeah. It's kind of um oh, I thought when coming here today was um kind of a full circle moment for me. Um, I used, I was a journalist in the military. I was in the military for seven years and I worked as a broadcast journalist and I saw gaps there and the main gaps. And what I saw was like people who didn't look, who looked like me, but also weren't getting attention. And so they were, um, their, their stories weren't being told. They weren't being seen as, um, uh, a contributing member to society or was also was helping towards, the, you know, helping move things forward. And so mm -hmm. when I came to the college as well and I knew about so many different black artists and I'd seen so many um different artists um that were in in the community but they weren't being highlighted in the school um mm -hmm. it made me really want to think about what is the school's black history um what is um there where are the people who look like me and what have we done because I know we've done so many things and so that research um really just kind of like galvanized me and it just really just started getting the ball rolling mm -hmm. um and that made me really start to think of like okay if I don't if we're not telling our own story um in this scenario we're being erased um purposely mm -hmm. intentionally or unintentionally um mm -hmm. but if no one's telling our story then we need to we need to be telling it um because and from our point of view at that and um that's the one reason why I started um, looking into the College of Black History, um, mm -hmm. documenting our community. Mm -hmm. um, and by community, it wasn't just students and alumni or teachers. Mm -hmm. It was also it was also um, staff members, people who kept mm -hmm. the college running um, yeah. because it's a predominantly white you know institution. Um, but there mm -hmm. are predominantly black staff. I mean, you know yeah. what I mean. Um, people who are keeping the college moving, and so that is mm -hmm. very important um, as well. Yeah. So yeah. that just kind of. That's where the practice started. Yeah. Um, there are the other different things that we did. We had a demonstration at the school. Um, yeah. 
And then we also, I'm um, also created, you know, an exhibition to mm -hmm. showcase um, those artifacts, similar mm -hmm. like to where I am now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about what you're doing about now. If you can brag to everybody about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saying that too. I appreciate hearing not only how that, how your practice got started and how mm -hmm. those values drive your practice and what you're interested in. Yes. But also, I know in the research we've done, it sounds like there's a lot of parallels between why you are doing photography and why photography for civil rights and why activist photography and art was so important to people like Paul Henderson, Richard Childers, yeah. who are taking photos not that long ago. I was yeah. born in 99, so I'm like, it was before my time, but right. <laughs> Wait, yeah, way before my time as well. But you know, um, it's it just makes me think about um, you know, the Afro, the Afro turned 100 with where I work. Um, I'm part of Afro Charities, which is a sister organization which cares for the Afro's archive. And the Afro, um, the Baltimore African American newspaper turned 130 years old this year. Um, and it is um one of the oldest black-owned um family businesses in the country, um, and definitely the state of Maryland. Um, and wow. so they've been telling um stories um, about the black community for the, and um from their that point of view for 130 years and if you think about the history of um america and, and racism and and different newspapers that was another way disseminating information um mm -hmm. when you think about photographs and how they did they depicted black people maybe as not our uh, people of color not as and as and not as human or in um you know uh uh desolate situations whereas in the afro they were really lifting up um um, our heroes, they were showing it from a different point of view. There's been times I've, you know, read in newspapers where, um, you know, a newspaper might have written that this event was a riot. And mm -hmm. then you find out that it was really a peaceful protest that, you know, then something was sparked and there was something thrown or something. And then it, it mm -hmm. turned into a, a, an altercation. And mm -hmm. so, like, it definitely gives you different two sides of the view. And so, like, mm -hmm. I think, like, photography, like for Paul Henderson was, mm -hmm. you know, documenting the community, documenting what happened from our, from his perspective, our perspective, and, like, being in the moment um, with mm -hmm. the people. Um, because a lot of those times, um, it was, everything was, you know, just one side. Um, it could be view viewed as one sided because we didn't mm -hmm. have, you know, the resources or things like that provided in our communities. But we were making yeah. a way for ourselves anyway, you know, mm -hmm. to, um, you know, really, you uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Not catty corner. What's to really like um to go against, you know, yeah. what is what is being published already? You know what I mean? Right. Kind of um contradict, I guess. Yes, like contradict. Challenge, like challenge yeah. up point of view. Yes, absolutely. At the very least, make people ask who is telling the story and why and is it the whole story? And exactly very often it was not. Right. Thank you. And so how we feel about jumping into maybe the Paul Henderson and Richard Childress photo, oh, yes. and then yeah. we can look at yours, yes, and then chit chat about those a little bit because I know our audience during our craft activity today, um, registrants for the program received a lovely email written by Marco that had all of our craft instructions and resources, and I know we provided a Paul Henderson photo and a Richard Childress photo for people to have fun with and put in their craft camera. Okay. today all right thank you margo all right everybody so this, camera yeah <laughs> look at that thing have you yeah. ever worked with a camera that big yeah actually i have it's um that's a pretty large format camera um when i was in school um at micah yeah they have um cameras like that it's a large mm -hmm. camera very manual it's not like you know we have automatic we have digital cameras today but um it's a powerful camera you can do a lot of things with that camera I think Mr. Henderson made good use of those cameras in his time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He worked also, did we say he worked at the Afro? He did not, but I was that was gonna be my yes, next thing. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, there he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Do you know a little bit about Paul Henderson? Would you like to talk about him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that um, you know, he's a photographer for many years. Um mm -hmm. I know he has some some did some different types of businesses and things like that before he became a photographer. He's not originally from Baltimore, but he moved here, um, and he started um, photographing at the at the newspaper. Um, he was at all he was at all of the different main different uh, events or even protests or he was everywhere. Um, he was well known for um, he was well known for like having his ladder all the time and getting up high and taking like. Um, photographs and go back we didn't have a drone and stuff like that but it looked like he had one you know what I mean um, yeah, he was yeah. an amazing amazing photographer for sure yeah is, is there a photo of him you would consider your favorite 
Mm. He has a lot of good ones. Yeah, he has a lot of good ones. It's hard to just pick just one, but he has a, but there is, I did see a photograph of his um, at the local church um, mm. metropolitan. Um, yeah. Kind of like the, uh, he took of uh, the congregation. It was really beautiful. Um, and it's, it's a very, uh, it's a very old, old photo. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah. Everybody, this is Paul Henderson. He is, we have so many photos of his in our collection. Um, one that we will be diving into a little closer today is a very important photo. Mm -hmm. So this is a photo of a picket line of people protesting Jim Crow admission policy before the theater. So this photo was taken roughly around 1948. And this photo, so the Ford Theater test, um, Dion, please feel free to jump in if you are familiar. Yeah. And I'm sure you are familiar. <laughs> you know, let's put our brains together. What do you know about Ford Theater? What do I know? Well, I know that the Ford Theater had, um, it was segregated. Um, they did have um, Black artists who performed there, um, but it was segregated where uh, I believe Black folk had to buy, take, they bought a ticket in the same area, but they had to go to a separate building and go down, you know, some finagle, you know, some crazy way to get to their seats. I mean, of course, they weren't good seats. Um, so they started uh, protesting. Um, and a lot of other different artists started protesting. Now, I, I forget, the, was it Paul Robeson, I think, was, um, I think he was supposed to perform there, but then he was gonna, he was gonna like cancel or something, but he, he was mm -hmm. under contract, so he couldn't. But um, he did perform, but what he did, what he did start doing, he started coming out here to protest um mm -hmm. so i'm even like so every so paul henderson he covered um all different types of events and um mm -hmm. protests and civil rights um mm -hmm. and social justice issues in the city of baltimore thank you paul henderson because having photos of these is very important yeah <laughs> i'm always yeah, I'm interested about the fourth theater protest specifically it's one example of the protest is powerful and it can create change but it also you know at the museum we try to emphasize the fact that it took like seven years for them to mm -hmm. listen and to finally allow integrated seating and things at Ford's Theater. Mm -hmm. And it's not to be confused with the one that President Lincoln was shot right. in DC. Yeah. That one still stands. Unfortunately, this theater was torn down. Right. I want to say 1969. Mm -hmm. The beauty of this photogra photograph also just shows um, the different, the people who were also in support of, um, of, abolishing segregation yeah um and so that that's one of the beautiful things and i also like to look at the clothes um, of the time period yeah. every just so nice yes she looks sharp with her hat on um, the woman on the left in the front i know um, yes that's no church hat she's she's about her business mm -hmm. very nice all right well this is one photograph and for our audience if you notice anything else that sticks out in this photograph because we want to be able to take a deeper dive today. So if you notice anything or you have questions about anything that you see in the photos or maybe you just find something interesting that you want to point out to everybody else, please feel free to put it in the chat or raise your hand and tell us about it. We want to give you all a chance to look at these cool photographs. I see something. Um, the woman in the, her, her hat, at the top of her hat, um, mm -hmm. you can see another person looking out the window um, and oh. watching. Um, I didn't notice that the first time. But if I'm closer, look, yeah. Oh my gosh, I work here and I never saw that. <laughs> that, that is too cool. I know. I'm also the woman in the front. I'm also looking. She, this is a small detail. She has like a button on her jacket. And I'm curious if it uh, might say something about if it's about their protests or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it could be an NAACP button or something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I always love looking at photographs and thinking about, you know, um, like you said, like what, what this button means, what it could mm -hmm. have been, um, especially things I can't see. And I know you mentioned in your practice. Oh, very true. Yeah. Thank you, Quinn. The signs do not refer to the community directly. Yeah. Especially right. that guy, the second in the line, his sign says American citizens, which is, and then another guy says fellow Americans. That's, thank you. That's really important. Yeah, that's another th thing to think about, about activism and about activist art. Um, sometimes they, a lot of times they galvanize, you know, they, they have a call to action. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that you can also think about um, when we're talking about like art making and things like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think 
We're ready to jump into our next photo, maybe this we can sit and look at this one all day, but we'll get a chance to talk about it a little more during our craft. So this is our second photograph. This is a photograph by Richard Childress. And this photograph is Charles J. Luthard protesting at a core convention. So Dion, tell us about core a little bit. Do you know me? What do you know? I I honestly don't know much about Richard Childress. Mm -hmm. um, I know he was like a, a sun photographer. He was worked at the sun, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, that's what I know mostly about him. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But this says Black Power No. I think so. We noticed the guy is holding a sign that says Black Power No. So that kind of that gives us. It's very interesting. I love the angle of this photo, especially because this man directly in front of us, it's pretty obvious detail, but he's got that, he's got the word freedom on his hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sorry. Um, yes, so CORE was the Congress of like racial equity, equality. Yeah. Um, and I know, I, I don't know if it went along with um, SNCC or anything like that. Um, I feel like I've seen those two together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I know it was a civil rights organization that mm -hmm. uh, was pivotal during the, the movement. Yes. Um, but I must say, I did not uh, review this photo um, beforehand, but this is very powerful. This is in it Baltimore, is. right? It is, it is in Baltimore. Yeah, I can tell from the... Um, I can tell from the the homes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've been trying. We're trying to figure out what street exactly this photo was taken on. If any of our audience members, mm -hmm. if you've laid eyes on this photo and you might know, we're trying. We're trying to figure it out. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Richard Childress. Yeah. He, he he did. He worked for the Sun. He joined in around 1961. So he joined at a very good time to be a photojournalist. Mm -hmm. And he was there until his death in 1984. And he, according to The Sun, uh, took photographs and wrote stories for literally everything and anything that was happening in Baltimore. Yeah, you know, thinking about like the amount of news and coverage, especially during the civil rights yeah, in the era, mm -hmm. um, and just any anywhere, just in a major city anyway, like Baltimore, like um, how busy in the labor, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? Um, to be at all those different um, events, and I think like that's another thing that sometimes we don't think about um, as um, photographers, like you know, back you know during the, that time period. Mm -hmm. um, like now today, we have like social media, and we have phones. Everybody has a phone, and everybody's able to kind of like be able to be that photographer um, and able to get, you know, have more um, different types of opinions and shots and things like yeah. that from different people. Yeah. And so I just think about the labor, like the, how they had to be, they were, I mean, it was had to be nonstop. They had to have gone to maybe 10 events a day or 10 different things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then not to mention yeah. the, the process, the film and, you know, all those things. So it was definitely labor intensive process um, for those photographers um, during that time period. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And there's so many stories. There's some pretty funny photographs of them just running away from <laughs> the mm -hmm. men or just trying to stay out of the crossfire whenever those peaceful protests were interrupted. So it's always. Yes. Right. Um, and I've had those experiences too, um, um, working in um, and doing different protests. I'll show you a few videos because I'll show you a few photos because I know we got to um, start our our activity our soon. Activity. That is okay. We'll take yeah. a little bit of time, but I was going to say, let's jump in we want to take a look at some yeah. of Dion's photos hear from the photographer artist herself about what is happening in those photos so like I was saying I used to be in the military and I also saw mm -hmm. these caps and I had you know radio show and different things like that mm -hmm. um in, from 2006 to 2013 mm -hmm. um I covered news stories um but then when I got out of the military um I really started like photographing for freelancing for like different people and just on my own going to different protests and and covering different um, events and so I was really um inspired by photojournalists and like the work yeah. that they were doing but then there was also an artistic flair that I just couldn't get away from that I wanted to you know pursue so that's what you know really you know led me to Micah and um mm -hmm. looking at the works of like Dawu Bay this is an, an image by Dawu not, not by me and he was mm -hmm. thinking about the Birmingham um bombings yeah. and um, what he did was he the little girls who had passed away what he did was mm -hmm. he photographed little girls from that town 
the yeah. age that they had passed away and then also people who the age that they would have been when he took the yeah. photograph um yeah. and they were photographed in the muse in a, in a museum yeah. that was um, at the time segregated um so it kind of everything kind of came full circle in his work and he really yeah. inspired me and I happened to meet him um when as soon as I started at Micah and so he was the person who really inspired me to tell me to stay local and you know think about my community which was um the black community at the college that I wasn't seeing being represented um mm -hmm. or the story was being told so it led me to thinking about the college's history and then I read their books and um I mm -hmm. found out you know, there was a little bit of history there but it had been overlooked and that's what really started me into researching mm -hmm. and I found all of these um like people who tried to come to the college or who couldn't people who made um significant contributions to the arts um, yeah. even after segregation was over in 1954. And that just what really was what led me to want to start documenting my community. Look, there goes Chloe. Ah. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, fun fact. I yeah, did go to my co and Dion. <laughs> right, you remember? And I was literally just stopping people on the street and saying like, hey, you go to the college, what's your name? Where are you from? Mm -hmm. Um, you got a few minutes. I want to know about your practice. You know, what do you do? And so that really is what re really made me want to start just photographing people where I saw them. And let's just have a, you know, a short conversation of what it's like to be here at the college. And that's where I created this exhibition. And I made some facsimiles of, of different artifacts and books and things like that. And I had this exhibition at the college. And that's what prompted our president, and along with this demonstration, um, what prompted our president to issue a letter of apology and for the college's racist past. It continued on again. Um, and there were more exhibitions done at the college um, with the work. And so I've since like started collecting um, materials from uh, our alumni and from students and like buying artwork from Tom Miller, um, mm -hmm. who was an alumni and things like that, who passed away. And it started Black Lives LLC, which has been a business um, that I really want to help with historical research and archival mm -hmm. services and disseminating information in our communities, whether that's for institution or that could be, you know, for an individual. Um, mm -hmm. So if anybody needs help or assistance with, um, with, uh, with their research, please mm -hmm. hit me up. Um, I can be on my, you can hit me up on my email, um, regular Instagram, all social media accounts, email. And these are just some of the community partners that I've worked with um, mm -hmm. over the over the last maybe like five years. Not everybody, but just I'm um, a few. And I didn't even put in individuals mm -hmm. um, since hosted different um, events, mostly virtual because of COVID, you know, when everything mm -hmm. kind of happened, but also mm -hmm. in person. Um, so I do want to encourage everybody to think about next year. Um, we're doing things throughout the year, but one of the biggest events that MIBA hosts, the Maryland Institute Black Archives and Black Archives is Tom Miller Week, um, which is the Maryland um, Center for Senior Culture has been a partner since the beginning and always continues to be a great support, um, has worked by Tom Miller. Um, we celebrate the life of um, this amazing artist um, who's from Baltimore and also attended the college. Um, so yeah, we, we, we do different events and things like that. Um, so if you're interested in, in, in the archives or in photography, um, yeah, let me know, hit me up and we, let's see if we can work together. I'd love to, um, you know, know more about what you're doing and, you know, your story and things like that. So, yeah, I think oh, that's everybody having fun. <laughs> yeah, that's a wrap. <laughs> right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, and like you know, so now what I do, like like Chloe had said earlier, was I'm a public access archivist at um the Afro um Afro Charities at Afro Charities, which is a sister organization for the Afro newspaper. And I also teach um at Micah um adjunct faculty um during the fall and um you know different workshops, photography and things like that um with kids um around the city and I'm involved in a lot of different um, world histories and different types of projects like that um, around the city. So mm -hmm. I'm just really excited to be here and, you know, our activities and, you know, talk about photography. Oh, God. Thank you so much for sharing, Dion. Yeah. I wish we had a whole nother hour just to Of course. I feel like we just, that was just like scratching the surface. Y'all, please hit Dion up if you really ever want to work something. I'm going to put my info in here. <laughs> yeah. This is my website. There you um, go. This is Black Eyes, and this is MIBA online. The online is like the dot com. It's dot online. So yeah. Absolutely. And then if, if anybody missed those links or we have some people coming in later, those links will pop up again for the end of the program. But thank you, Dion, so much. I'm excited to get into our craft and talk Me a little too. bit more about your work and cameras and photography. So we're going to take about a five two or three minute break so yeah. we will see you all back here we'll get started at 10 40 we'll say 10 41 you'll see our little 
our Boise or our hands and our craft materials pop back up in a yes. little bit. But yes. all right. get your supplies ready. We yes, are give, coming. Give, give <laughs> all right. We'll see y'all in a few. All right, all our friends, welcome back to the program. <laughs> so we are down in our lovely studio. We are using our wonderful dot cam. So we're going to jump into our craft activity. So I hope everybody's got their materials ready, or you got a notepad to write the steps so you can get to this later. Yeah. Can everybody? Is everybody there? Can everybody drop in the in the chat um, what kind of materials you're using today? Are you using the cutout? Are you using some cardboard? Mm -hmm. um, a box? All right. Hey, Emily. Hi, Emily. So we're going to start with um, the cutout that um, was provided by um, the Maryland Center for History and Culture. Mm -hmm. So we got, so all of our audience here, if you didn't grab a snack box or cardboard or anything, all right, go Clinton. <laughs> That's my kind of style too. <laughs> So this is our template. So just for the sake of time, we went ahead and cut this out and cut out all these areas that have scissors and it gives you this nice little shape, but on it, and it has like nice steps right here. Right. So now that we've got all that. Yeah, we can talk a little bit kind of like what the camera will look like when we put it together and I'll tell you about the parts and then we can talk about decorating. So we kind of put the whole camera together. I'm just gonna briefly just kind of do a little bit like that. Um, this would be our viewfinder. Mm -hmm. there we go. Uh oh, here we go, right here. There this will go. be our viewfinder. What does the viewfinder do? The viewfinder is what you look through so that you can um, take a photo. Um, so make sure you have this cut, this whole cutout, because if you don't have a cutout, then you can't, um, you can't see anything. You can't take a photo, right. Right. Very dark. <laughs> and then if you um, have a digital camera, um, when you take the photograph, this would be like where the uh, screen would display your photograph. Mm -hmm. So think about like what pictures you want to create or draw mm -hmm. so that when your photo, when your camera is done, um, you can display your photo, maybe like possibly right here in this box. Mm -hmm. And then of course, um, it could come out right here too. This is just a little imaginative area where your photo could come out of. I know, Dion, you have a beautiful example. I right. A tape right there. Right. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. You have a beautiful um, example here. Of, yeah. This looks like what a traditional, yeah. a traditional Polaroid camera yeah. would have done. Oh, somebody made Ooh, another one, that's too. That's a little baby one. Right. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah, this is another camera that I um, created um, out of a box, um, which kind of works similar. It's just a deconstructed box um, that is turned inside out. Um, and then uh, I just decorated it and then I um, put uh, the different, like the camera lens here, the button, and I gave it a little strap. Okay, so let's get started. So now that we've identified all the pieces of the camera, let's decorate it. Let's do it. So yeah, Dion has a really good idea. We're going to decorate our camera first. Let's decorate it first because it's going to be kind of hard to decorate it after the fact. Mm -hmm. so we got um, I learned my lesson. <laughs> Me too. That's why yeah. all my decorations fell off. What but. kind of things would we like to um, decorate and put on our camera? We got some sparkles. Yeah, here. it's fall, so maybe it's we fall. can get some flowers falling down. Oh, I like it. it got some colored strips over yeah. here. If you want to try and, and if you can't tell by my nails, of course, I like <laughs> the bling, and I also like to sparkle. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. So we're gonna put some different <laughs> things on here. Come on, Chloe, help me get your hands dirty. <laughs> I don't wanna Don't be shy. Off. I like don't these be little shy. square ones. These square ones are cute. Oh wait, wait. Well, yeah, maybe we should make. We'll make this because we're um, using our imagination. Imagination. <gasps> oh. We will. <laughs> we will make this our um our lens. How about that? Wait, I like it. Can so yeah. Stick a gym? Yeah. Stick a gym yeah. Gym. Okay. Boom. It takes pretty oh. pictures. Yeah. The picture's got more colors than what we can see. Yes. Human eye. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have a camera at home? Mm -hmm. Even if it's like your cell phone, drop what kind of camera you got at home. Is it a film camera? Is it a digital camera? Mm -hmm. Is it just a regular cell phone camera? Mm -hmm. You have a camera, Chloe? I have my phone camera, but you know. <laughs> when the mood strikes, I like to take a lot of pictures of my cats. Mm -hmm. oh, I cats. always love to hear what people take pictures of. Ooh. 
That's a good point. What, are, what is everybody taking pictures of these days? Um, I did take some pictures of my cats the other day. Um, I love taking pictures of my cats. Um, I'm taking pictures. Yeah, they are very cute. Um, I like to take pictures of like the season changing and I love to take pictures of clouds. Here we go. I'm gonna put us a little, I wonder if maybe, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a little, I did this on my camera, but I unfortunately um, don't have it with me, but I put some like shiny material behind, like on the bottom where the viewfinder is. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a sparkly little, Mm. But for now, I'm just going to put some sparkles around it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just make sure you have at least the lens mm -hmm. um, and give yourself maybe one right here at the top for a button. I mean, Ooh. for the for the shutter button. There we go. Don't want to forget about our shutter. Let's see. You want a pom-pom shutter? Yeah. Button? Ooh, <laughs> we'll pom-pom shutter. I'm going to use it with tape. There we go. Yeah, so feel free to use a hot In the glue effort gun. of time, because we only got about 10 minutes left. So mm -hmm. in the effort of time, we will do that. Does anybody have any questions out there in um, Zoom land? Mm -hmm. If you do, um, we're monitoring the chat. Yeah. So let's start to stick our um, camera. Let's do it. Let's start to stick it together. So we're going to put it together with a little more. Do you want to try with the glue? Mm -hmm. Do we want to try with the glue? Let's try with the tape. Let's Just try so with we can... the tape. But you can use glue. Yes. We could use hot glue if you're. Yeah. You know. And you can use whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, so ask your parents before you go. Yeah, glue, but I got. We also have a lovely. We got a blue ribbon here. We can mm -hmm. attach to our camera, so we can put it on our wrist and take it everywhere with us. Is anybody else out there making? Emily, are you also making a um a camera with us? Uh oh, I bent the tape. Uh oh, that's okay. Y'all just support. Thank All right, Emily. yes. And sometimes you need some support. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to come together. Come together. Right. <laughs> you know, because everybody wants and to work. There oh, we Emily's go. making. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Maybe we can see your camera after you're done. Yes. Emily, that'll be perfect. Very important. We are always happy. Please send pictures. We will yes. gladly post them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We'll post them on Facebook. Yes. We've had some people in the past. It's very sweet. They will bring an extra of something they made during a program, and we get to. Put it right there in the museum store. Ooh, museum drop store, it off. Yeah, our museum store manager, Joanne, she loves to put displays for people. And we love to put up what people have been doing. So if you want to create a second camera. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yeah, we take our picture work. here. <laughs> and then, now, the, now we got to remember our picture. There we go. So another thing that came in the packet was this lovely set of Polaroids that will fit right into your camera. Oh, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim nice. some of these out. Okay. And while I'm trimming them out, Dion, do you wanna show some examples of what you did with your Polaroid graphs? Yes. And what kind of things, what is that like, what are these for? What are we gonna do? Well, I drew, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Is it upside down? Oh yeah, it is. Go. See, <laughs> wow. Get Come a whole on. 180 view. Right, okay. So um, I drew um, the Washington Monument. It's right near the Maryland Center for History and Culture in Mount Vernon Park. Um, so this is what I drew on my poll work, because this is something that I see. Um, and let's see, I have another blank one here that we can draw something together. There we go. What are we going to draw? Um, let's draw my kitty cats. Oh. Because they look so cute all the time. I oh, know, they, they never know. So I'm going to give them an ear. There we go. Two ears. This is going to be so cute. Let's see how my kitty cat face. <laughs> oh, the cat has to have a nose, right? Of course, they got a snow. A nice little mouth. Mm -hmm. we'll give her some eyes mm -hmm. and whiskers. I watched. I watched this um a video on Netflix that was talking about the life of cats. <gasps> Isn't that life of hidden? That hidden life. Yes, it's so, so good. So, if you're a pet animal, if we have any pet animal enthusiasts, let us know. Also, watch that series. It was very yes. Fun. Like they were talking about how the whiskers are a part of the nervous system and they help cats, you know, navigate how like they can fit into like tight spaces and things like that. You said their collarbone is muscle. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, dang. I wonder if Paul Henderson was a cat person. Do you think he might have? That is too cute. I hope he is. I he hope he was be. a cat person. He might be. Let's see. Oh my God. What else? Where are you going to draw, Chloe? I don't know. I got my baby pole oh. here. You inspired me to draw a cat. I think I might 
I don't know. Dion, can I draw you? Yeah, draw me. <laughs> draw me. Draw here, let's put it over here so everybody can see. Here everybody can watch your work. Here we go. There's my teeny little. Here, let's see if we can oh, zoom in. in. Okay. There we go. Pose. Oh. <laughs> okay. oh, you can't see my pose. I'm gonna do. Hold on, I'm gonna do like a little stick. Oh, look just like me. <laughs> You're too nice. Oh my god. Yes, yes. My professor. It's a wrap. My professors at Mike would be so disappointed. <laughs> They'd be like, "Oh, girl, what is that?" <laughs> like nice mark making. Uh-huh. It looks good. It looks good. Yep. Got the go. glasses. Boom. We got a little arm. That is me. Here. A little pizzazz. That looks great. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, that's definitely like me. Well, almost, almost. You're just being so. You're being too kind. Clinton says you're talented. Ah, thank you, Clinton. <laughs> thank you. Yes. We didn't get those BFAs for nothing. I get it. Right. Let's Does anybody see. have a picture that they want to show us? I want to see. Here Here's our camera. Oh, gotta get it to come out the Ooh. camera. There we go. Gian. And today is nine seventeen twenty two. Yes, and don't forget you signed right. Chloe's right. Yeah. Sign your work. Sign your work. So now we're going to put our, it's going to go. Okay. So we're going to go. Wow. Click. And then <gasps> look at that. Took Does it picture. show me? Oh, we wow. Took <laughs> we took a picture of Dion. Wow. Isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> that is so yes. cute. Isn't look at cute? that. I just realized oh, oh, the oh, camera. Oh, there we go. There we go. Check it out. Wow. We take our picture. Oh, oh. we take our picture. There you go. Click. And then, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, this was so fun. We're having too much fun. Too let, much us, fun. let us know if anybody, if you're doing this craft right now, At how home. you're having, if you're having fun, what do you think you're going to yeah. take a picture of? <laughs> yeah. Take a picture um, of your work and what you made today. Tag me at Dion Moses on Instagram or oh, yeah. at MD History, MD History on Instagram. Um, yeah. Email us. We'd love to see what you've done. This Thank has been you. a really fun activity. Thank you, Dion, for joining yes. us. Enjoying. Anytime. We got about five minutes left, so we want to open it. If anybody in the room has any questions, whether it's about any of the photographs we showed you, or just about photography in general. We have Dion here with us today. And I know photography is an incredible process. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. So if anybody has questions for Dion. Yeah. I mean, also um, passion and purpose. That is true. We got um, passion and up. purpose up. Yeah, you should come visit it. It's an amazing um, exhibition yes. talking about civil rights um, yes. in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of, some things came from the Afros archive, um, the, um, Maryland Center for Eastern Cultures Archive. Mm-hmm. Have you had, has anybody seen it? Has anybody um, on, the, on the chat? Um, have they seen it? It's, it's a really great exhibition. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, the whole museum is. Oh, um, cool. You know, if you, once you see that first exhibition, you just travel throughout um, the facility and, mm-hmm. and see more. There's a lot to see. Dion was actually sitting in our Passion and Purpose exhibit for the first part of the program today. So mm-hmm. Yes, little, that's where I was at. Little taste of our, that was our modern day section you were sitting in. There we okay, go. Okay, that is amazing. She's ready to go. <laughs> you see, they make little purses, or it looks like mm-hmm. yeah, it's just a purse. I need to get one of those. Listen, we have the copyright that I can see this coming out, like Uh-oh. and being in a store or something. <laughs> this yes. is nice. We do want to give credit to this craft, the New York Historical yes. Society. They yes. actually had a craft program about photographs and mm-hmm. cameras and actually used this craft. So we took it, adapted a little bit, but we do want to say thank you. If yes. anybody from New York Historical Society, oh, uh, it's okay, Emily. It Emily, can practice. we see what it looks like? <laughs> you want to show us? Can you show us, Emily? It's okay. You I would love to see it. Mm-hmm. This is a nice that. box too. This is good. Thank you. This is a nice camera. Had my vitamins in it. Mm-hmm. Got I know. I was like, really? Like, <laughs> um, yes. Dang, it's great. Cool. Emily, the first time I made mine, um, my camera did not look like that. Oh, oh I was just nowhere near that. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. Sounds the like first time started. I made my camera, it didn't turn out very well. The second time, the charm. There you go. Try it again um, today. Also, look at this. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I ripped it off. No. <laughs> it's okay. What? Oh. So now it's got the different lenses. Right. Yeah, so that is another part. Since we had a hot glue gun or something, we would have been attaching, got some little caps and things. 
my star doesn't yes matter. definitely if you're going to use this make sure you use a stronger um, adhesive yes um we have all kinds of caps yes i know and another thing they said that was very fun if you want to go back and try your camera again especially emily if your daughter decides she wants to take another crack at it <laughs> they did something fun they took a pom pom and they put it on the lens and then they took one and put it on top and mm -hmm. basically when you glued it the pom pom was soft so you were able to like turn it and oh kind yeah of focus your lens Yes, that was very cute. But Dia, this one, this one's just beautiful. I love it. I love the balloons. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was a party when I made this. I'm sure it was. You tried it with your little nephew too, right? Mm -hmm. you tried yes. It so Emily, my nephew also uh, ripped up uh, the the camera when we first started making it. So yes, don't do that. Yeah. So, but. Yeah. I think we're gonna go, we're on our last minute. We have a couple of things we wanna plug before we yes. let you all go for the day. So thank you again, Dion, for, I'm gonna talk with my hands, for, <laughs> my for pleasure, coming my pleasure. joining us today. <laughs> so we hope you all will join us again soon sometime in December, I believe December 3rd, we will be having another object dive similar to this but it will be around our upcoming fashion exhibit for Claire McArdle and we'll be playing with paper dolls. Ooh. So we hope you all will join. Deanna, hope we see you there too, but Ooh. I know you've got, you busy. Oh, she said she be there. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> there we go. And Dion, we're going to go ahead and plug your website one more time and your other projects in the chat. But is there anything you want to tell the audience about what you got going on, what's happening in your world that yeah, I mean, it's, I'm still working on the Maryland Institute Black Archives project, um, still um, talking and documenting um, Black students um, who've attended the college or Black History affiliated with the college. So if you know any facts um, or anything like that, or people that I, you think I should be talking to, please reach out. I'm um, still working um, with Afro Charities in um, the Afro. I have to plug them. Um, they're an amazing resource. If you're doing any type of Black history research, please reach out to me. Um, that's my job is to help you search the, um, the archives, um, which are not physically accessible right now, but there are ways that you can do the research on your own. So please, please, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help um, um, any type of research you want to do um, at all within the city of Baltimore. Yes, ma'am. And, thank, and you. thank you again, um, Maryland Center for History <laughs> Culture, for having me. This has been a great way to start my Saturday. Oh, so glad. that's a great way to start ours, too. Thank you for joining. We yes. hope to see you again soon, work with you again. And thank you to everybody for joining. Have an amazing weekend and rest and oh man we're gonna be bringing in fall next week so everybody get ready for fall um i believe so but, yeah it's fall <laughs> yeah but thank you everybody we'll see you all again sometime bye, bye.